The battery of reporter questions focused on one issue. Is the president's prized summit with Kim Jong-un now in peril? We haven't seen anything. We haven't heard anything. Uh, we will see what happens. Whatever it is, it is. Donald Trump suggested he had not been informed of any plan to cancel the Singapore meeting in June. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Time will tell. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Sarah. White House advisors said the president would not be intimidated or forced into concessions. Look, this is uh, something that we fully expected. Um, the president is very used and ready for uh, tough negotiations. And if they want to meet, we'll be ready. And if they don't, that's OK, too. The North Korean statement made clear the country would not be forced into unilateral nuclear disarmament. And it hinted the most anticipated summit in decades is now in doubt. <laughs> Until this announcement, with a series of masterful and highly symbolic diplomatic steps, Kim Jong-un had raised expectations of a dramatic breakthrough. That border summit with the South Korean leader last month and his meetings with the US Secretary of State were all part of Pyongyang's unexpected charm offensive. So too was the decision to release the three Americans being detained, a move that led Trump to praise the North Korean dictator. But US national security experts say Kim was never likely to agree to simply abandon the country's missile program or dismantle his precious nuclear arsenal without major concessions in return. Kim Jong-un has real priorities, and those are regime security and nuclear weapons are a real part of that or have been a part of that for decades. So the fact that he would simply show up in Singapore and say, here are my nuclear weapons, with getting nothing back, that simply wasn't a realistic outcome. As experts puzzle over Kim's precise strategy, John Bolton, one of the most hawkish figures in the administration, made a link with a previous nuclear deal that may have alerted Kim to the prospect of an American trap. I think we're looking at the Libya model of 2003-2004. For Kim Jong-un, Libya and the fate of Colonel Gaddafi at the hands of an angry mob may be the best example of why not to surrender his nuclear weapons. The deal Gaddafi made did not save him. Joint US-South Korean military exercises will still go ahead as planned. For Seoul and for Washington, this is now a time for calibration, trying to show military strength and diplomatic resolve, but without blowing up the prospects for the summit. President Trump seemed unusually defensive in the Oval Office, suddenly aware that the summit he is so trumpeted may elude him after all.